Hallelujah. I hope y'all remember, y'all made a hit record a few years ago. It was a little bit like this right here.
and like me. I got to get, I got to slow things down a little bit. We've been working all week though, not all of us, but me and where's he at? Oh, he's back there and another one back there. We, I got old flip house going right there in Nashville. And uh, we should just about wrap it up Monday. Put it on the market, it's ready to go, it's beautiful, it come out good. I still uh, I still like doing that kind of stuff. You know, I'm a carpenter by trade. And a uh, heavy equipment operator and all that stuff. I dig ponds and lakes and all that. I build houses, tear old barns down, build new barns. Uh, I'm a welder. Uh, let's see. Man, I do it all. I need to be a plumber. No, I can't play guitar though. I can't do that. I, 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 you know what? I know three chords. Well, I learned four. And then I found out about a capo, and now I know hundreds of them. You know that something? Yeah, I could even be a plumber. <laughs> you only got to remember three things. <laughs> Get paid on Friday. Poo pooed over the floor of him. <laughs> and don't bite your nails. Man, I'm feeling good tonight. Y'all need to be careful. Slow things down. I just saw y'all made a big old hit record many years ago, and I'm glad you did. Beautiful country, sad country song.
I've been doing country music a long time, and I can't believe that in February it's going to be 52 years I've been doing this. Woo! 52. I started playing in home tones and nightclubs, dance halls, beer joints, whatever you want to call them down there in Southwest Louisiana when I was just 12 years old. No kidding. You know, my dad died when I was 11. I was the oldest of four kids. That's the only thing that interested me. Interested me. And if it wasn't for the music, I'd probably been in prison or, or got killed. One of the two. And uh, thanks to a fellow down there in Louisiana, he, he kind of took me under his wing. He had the hottest country band in South Louisiana by the name of J.B. Perry and the Music Max. Made me the band boy. That's why they called them. Uh, uh, that's what they called them back then. They wasn't called roadies. We were called band boys. And um, so I'm one of the lucky guys in country music. Because by the time I was 14 years old, I got to work with people like George Jones and Will Haggard and Conrad Twitty and Loretta Lynn and Tony Lynn, Ray Price, uh, the late Mel Street, uh, this whole bunch of Cal Smith. And um, I, like I said, I, I'm one of the lucky ones. I got to work with all those great vocalists. This was, you know, the stylist, what I call them. When they came on the radio, you knew right away who was singing the song. You didn't have to wait for a disc jockey to tell you who was singing. You knew who it was right away. I don't hear a whole lot of that anymore. They all sound alike to me. Yeah. I'm not kidding. I'm not being mean or ugly. It just sounds alike, and all the songs sound alike. Uh, so hopefully someday we'll get back to uh, to where when a guy or a girl comes on the radio, you know you know who they are right away. You don't have to wait for the disc jockey. Anyway, one of the guys I met when I was 14 was George Jones. The king of country soul is what I call him. And uh, I like good country soul singers, boys that can make you cry, you know what yeah. I mean? I like that. Man. And uh, me and old Jones, we became friends um, since I was 14 years old. And, and uh, all the way up to the day he died. And I, I'll never, uh, I'll probably never get over that. I miss him every day. Just like uh, my, my friend Joe Diffie, I miss him every day. And um, anyway, me and old Jones, we uh, we even got in the studio and had us a hit record together one time called Never Been a Bullet Like This Before. I didn't know when I was 14 years old that one day I would be singing a duet in Nashville with my hero, George Jones, and it'd become a hit record. Not very many people have done duet you know, do that records with Jones and have it and can say they had a hit with George Jones. And, uh, but I, I, I'm one of them. But anyway, a couple of three years ago, I went into the studio and decided I was going to do a tribute album to my friend. And I just got a whole bunch of old Jones hits and went into the studio and put them together on an album. And uh, the album is called Do You Know Me? Uh, tribute to George Jones. And uh, this next song I'm fixing to do for you, it was the second time that I had put it on, on a, a tribute album. But actually, and I love the song, but actually my favorite song Jones ever did was just a really sad song. I mean, it's final. It, uh, it goes, But I'll be over you When the grass grows over me That's fine, right. baby. But anyway, I did that one on that album also, but this was a song that uh, we're going to do for you tonight. Here's another one we did. He said, I love you. You love me. He told you
10 or 12 of us on there. We're all singing a different song than somebody else, like Leonard Skinner. And, uh, uh, I did uh, uh, the Beatles, that's right. I did the Beatles, Leonard Skinner, uh, the Rolling Stones, did Jim Croce. Uh, good Lord, did a whole bunch of them. Well, anyway, who was what? Lil Noss, that's right, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, we did a whole new album together. Yeah, it's good, it's good. I can get a lot. Kind of look it up on the uh, internet. You, you might you probably find it. Anyway, did a blues album down in South Louisiana with three of my friends uh, in a little, uh, we call them wash houses. They're about, uh, they're about 12 foot by 16 foot, you know, in this little old room, all four of us. Did this thing about a week and uh, wrote a little over half of the songs. If you ever mind, I'd like to do the title track of the album, something called The Blues Got Me. <laughs> Thank you. 
place, also our band leader, Mr. Robert Wright. Or John Harrison, you know him. You can call him whatever. Right over here on steel guitar, Matt Cleveland. Yeah. Back here on the drums, Mr. David Rollins. Right over here on guitar, Mr. Jeff Gunther. Um, got a few more guys that travel around with us, make these shows happen. Without this guy, it'd be tough for me because I'll be honest with you, I'm uh, um, just about lost all my hearing now. Uh, can't hardly hear anymore. This guy makes my night go by really good and um, does a great job because he runs the sound that we get to hear up here on stage. And uh, he does a great job for me. I ain't kidding you. The best in the business. Great cool. in the back. He's running the sound that you folks get to hear and with the combination of the two guys together. Man, they work great together and um, old Clancy Schmucker back there. Another uh, yeah. guy running around here while well, he's not running. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> He's here somewhere. I don't know where. Uh, but he's skinny as a rail. <laughs> I kidding you. He's a bus driver and he takes us uh, every night. He gets us safe to the next town. We sleep all night and he drives all night. Then I would say, usually say, he sleeps all day and we work all day and part of the evening. But he'll sleep for about three hours and he'd get up. Then about four or five hours later, he'd take another nap about three hours. And he'll just, he'll just drive and drive. He just, he ain't on drugs either. Because <laughs> if you're wired here, you're fired, baby. <laughs> um, Talmadge Patton, I don't know where he's at. Where's the guy singing? <laughs> this next guy I've been with me for probably about 27 years. He's out there somewhere, he takes care of all of our CDs and t shirts and caps and all that stuff. Mr. Mike Garrett, someone out there. Even Clark Manning came with us uh, tonight. I'm not really sure where he's at. Where? Where he's at? Uh, Mr. Billy Holland. Yeah, Billy, Billy Holland. Anyway, I want to thank the sound crew and uh, stage crew, lighting crew. Thank you all very much. Y'all made our... Our day really easy today, no kidding. We were done with all this stuff in less than two hours. And uh, we appreciate it, so how about a hand for them? <laughs> also, thank you folks for coming out, because if you didn't come out, we wouldn't get to do what we love to do so much. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much. <laughs> this next song we're going to do, when I got my record deal, Called me. As a matter of fact, speaking of producers, I don't see him here tonight. Harold Shedd. I don't see him tonight. He okay? Good. Uh, the last couple times I was here, Harold was here. Harold Shedd is the guy that signed me to Mercury Records back in 1990. <laughs> He's a very successful guy in the music industry well-liked and uh, respected. Uh, you know, he's done Alabama and KG Austin and Kentucky Headhunters. I mean, he's, he's done some big ones for I tell you. Uh, but anyway, one of my producers, Buddy Cannon, called me up. And he said, Sam, I'm gonna send you a song I want you to think about recording when you come to Nashville and do the first album, The Don't Go Near the Wall album. Your mommy used to worry about that big mighty river. <laughs> That album. Well, I was happy because I was now, they were saying, look, I had never got a song from Nashville to think about recording before because I never had a, a record deal, a major record deal. I just tried for 21 years. I never could get one. And then one time, and then all of a sudden, it just kind of fell in my lap when I got my priorities straight in life. 
And um, anyway, I always put my music first before everything. And then in 1989, something happened and I put my family first. And I got out of music for about a year and went to work for Walmart as a remodel supervisor for Walmart, traveling all around the country for a whole year. And I loved that job, and I'm telling you, I loved it. And then I believe that's when the good Lord said, you know what, the boy now got it right. And he gave me my record deal. And that's what I truly, truly believe. Good Lord gave it to me. I knew the song was coming in the mail, and it's back. We still had cassette tape boxes, you know. We still had cassette tapes, too. So I was mowing the grass. Mailman pulled up, put that little tape box in the mailbox. I was excited. I ran into the house. I put it in the machine. I started playing it. I got halfway through. I reached over, and I shut it off. I looked over in the kitchen at my wife there. I said, that's terrible, isn't it? She said, yeah, that's not very good. <laughs> so I called Buddy Cannon over in Nashville. I said, Buddy, you can't send me songs like this. We start recording songs like this, there won't be a career. He said, Sam, when you come to town, we'll cut it. If it works, good. If it don't work, we'll move on to the next song. I said, you got a deal. Well, folks, here's the song that started my career off back in 1994. <laughs>
the colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands. How do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I babies cry. And I watch them grow. They'll learn much more. Oh, Sambo, no. But I think to myself, what a wonderful world. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. One of the songs when we always uh, well look if you go back and listen to all my albums there's always one song I pick to redo that's 40, 50, 60 years old because I believe once a hit always a hit got lucky third rate romance Chevy Van baby's got a blue jeans on there's quite a few of them so when I was uh, thinking about what song I wanted to cut on this uh, on this album, I thought about this song right here because you got to realize now this was probably three years ago, and I always liked this song, but country music lost one of the greatest singer-songwriters that it's ever known or it ever will know. So I chose this song to put on the album, and I hope you like it. I hope you remember. Probably never see you eye to eye again. This letter is meant to be my last farewell. But you need to understand I'm nearly crazy. You need to know my life is gone to hell.
for a 